Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I am sitting on my bed right now. It is like eight o'clock at night and I am completely exhausted. We had such a fun filled day of freezer cooking. We have so much food in our freezer now. I quite literally could not fit another thing in my freezer right now. And it feels great. As we get into August, my kids are going back to school and that is just one more thing I can take off my plate for the month of August. As I talk through everything that we made, I won't necessarily be giving measurements and things like exact ingredients, but I've listed every one of the recipes in the description below. Even if your family is not a huge fan of freezer meals, I would encourage you to try some of these out because the ones that we made today are not necessarily your typical freezer cooking dishes. And I personally think they all reheat wonderfully well or the beef stew for example you just cut the bottom open and let it all fall into your slow cooker and it is fantastic i wish i could just wait and eat that one when it gets cold but here in the south that would be like november so we're going to be eating that one at some point in august and we'll just have to do it again when the weather cools off i'm so excited for you to join me and i'd love to hear your thoughts be sure to let me know if any of these recipes are new to you and you try them out with your family. We started off with five rotisserie chickens. Now these are only $4.98 at Sam's Club and my girls love pulling the meat off the bone for me and we save the carcasses in the freezer to put in the Instant Pot at a later time to make chicken stock. We started with chicken cordon bleu casserole. Now I used a low carb version that I found on a Trim Healthy Mama blog. I'll link that in the description below but you could easily Google chicken cordon bleu casserole and find a few different varieties with all the same components, definitely similar flavor, and you can get what you're looking for, whether it's low carb or one that you top with breadcrumbs. This one, you do rotisserie chicken, chopped ham, you make a delicious sauce with butter, cream cheese, Dijon mustard, lemon juice, a little splash of white wine, and then you top with Swiss cheese. Now we actually ended up having this tonight after my long day of cooking, and I made it with just a side of steamed broccoli and everyone loved it. I feel like even the pickiest of eaters would enjoy this casserole, and the best part is it has all the wonderful flavor of chicken cordon bleu, but with a fraction of the work. I was afraid it would be challenging to spread this sauce over the ham, but it really wasn't. The butter is melted and the cream cheese is already softened when you whip it all together in the mixer, and it really spread out quite nicely. We topped with baby Swiss, which has just a slightly less pungent flavor than regular Swiss. My kids tend to tolerate it a little bit more. They don't necessarily love a really well-aged Swiss that has a more potent flavor. I try to always remember to write the name of the recipe on the foil before I wrap the food up. These meals are not going to be in my freezer for very long, less than a month for sure. So I typically add one layer of foil on top and then I wrap it twice with plastic wrap. Really the double layer of plastic wrap just provides more stability to the foil pan when it goes in the freezer and allows me to stack two or three foil pans on top of one another without it messing up or flattening out the dish inside. Now we're moving on to butter chicken. This butter chicken recipe is so simple. Again, this one is really just a dump and go meal. Um, the most time consuming part is just cutting up the chicken into bite sized pieces that you're going to place in your gallon bag. Butter chicken is one of my very favorite dishes to get when we go to our local Indian restaurant for date night. It's absolutely delicious. It's so full of depth and flavor. Um, even if you don't venture out into Indian food, I would highly suggest you give this one a try. The spices are just incredible. The flavors come together nicely and we just serve it over rice. So here I am measuring out all the spices into two different bowls since I'm making two bags to go in the freezer. The recipe that I've linked is actually an Instant Pot recipe, but I've never made it in the Instant Pot. I usually just do this on the stove top. I've also never done this as a freezer meal, and I'm pretty excited about it because I feel like the chicken marinating in all of these spices for even longer than normal is going to make it even more delicious. So I haven't quite decided yet if when I defrost this meal, if I'm gonna put it in a slow cooker, or if I'm gonna go ahead and make it on the stove top again like I usually do. 
I might try it two different ways and let you know what I think. Either way, the flavors are going to be amazing. I still have younger kids in my house, so I prefer to go ahead and cut up the chicken that I'm using in this into bite-sized pieces so that none of it really requires to be cut up any smaller. I pour my spices in the bag and shake it around a bit to coat all of the chicken in all of these delicious spices. Next, I added about a can and a half of crushed tomatoes. Now, one thing about pretty much all of the recipes that I'm sharing today, you do not have to be precise with any of these ingredients. This butter chicken is even better if there's extra sauce. Make sure you look at the recipe before serving you add heavy cream, butter, and a little more garam masala. Here, my daughter is chopping celery for me. I had an idea when I started planning this freezer cooking day that I really wanted to also add a few components to my freezer cooking day that would just help me get a jump start on other meals throughout the month. So I've decided to put in the freezer three gallon bags that contain the meat from a whole rotisserie chicken, onions, carrots, and celery. Now there are so many things that I could do with this bag of chicken and vegetables. I could make a, a very easy chicken soup with um, some of the homemade chicken stock that we already have in the pantry. I could make chicken and dumplings, chicken pot pie. I could serve this as chicken and gravy over rice. These are also about half the ingredients that I need to make our chicken and wild rice soup. So I'm really looking forward to having three bags of this in the freezer. This may actually last me more than the next month. Now we're moving on to beef stew. This is one of my very favorite comfort meals, especially as the weather gets cooler. Um, first, I am cutting up about six and a half pounds of stew meat into bite-sized pieces. This just makes it easier and more enjoyable for my younger kids when we serve it. Next, I am peeling whole carrots. Now I could have purchased baby carrots, but this was so much cheaper to buy these big five or 10 pound bags of organic carrots and peel and cut them myself. We had a bumper crop of potatoes this year, so I decided to use a quart and a half of our home canned potatoes in place of peeling some fresh ones and chopping them up and putting them in. The slow cooker beef stew recipe I use calls for cream of mushroom soup, onion soup mix, a little dash of red wine, some crushed tomatoes, bay leaves, I mix all of it really well and then carefully pour it into the gallon bag over the other ingredients. Be careful, my bag was so full I actually ended up having to scoop a little bit of the sauce back into the bowl. These are ready to go in the freezer. Now we're moving on to West African peanut stew. You may see on my baggie that I have labeled ours Congo soup. Three of my daughters are adopted from the Democratic Republic of Congo. And when they first came home and they finally began speaking English, they thought this was the best dish and they called it Congo soup because it reminded them of home. This quickly became my very favorite vegan comfort dish. Don't knock it till you try it. The peanut butter adds a richness to the soup. You serve it warm over rice and we garnish with peanuts and sriracha. There are many varieties of West African peanut stew. If you don't care for all of the ingredients in the one that I've linked below, feel free to look up different versions and see if there's one that would better suit your taste, but I highly recommend you try one. Now, the one that I'm using calls for a fresh bunch of collard greens. Now, I don't have time to be washing and cooking collard greens for a freezer meal. So I always use canned. As you could see before, I rinsed them well. Um, I don't measure things like the peanut butter. It calls for a cup. So I did two really big scoops. As I've said before, I'm not really a huge fan of following recipes to a tea. Soups and stews in particular are very forgiving. Now make sure if you try this recipe, you do add the sweet potato. Um, I believe it is listed kind of as an optional ingredient in the recipe that I linked below, but I never make it without it. I just love the texture that it adds and the little pop of sweetness definitely adds some sweet potato. Fun fact, I went out to the garden and dug these up right before I put this together. I've only ever made this recipe on the stovetop, so I'm looking forward to using it in the slow cooker this time. 
Now we're moving on to breakfast burrito filling. Now, conveniently, my daughters had some friends over for a movie night last night, and they made a bunch of their favorite finger foods, one of which was sausage balls. Now, our favorite sausage balls are different than what you might imagine um, as an hors d'oeuvre. We mix breakfast sausage with cream cheese, a little pepper and garlic powder, and we wrap it in crescent dough. So the girls had some extra filling left over. I asked them to stick it in the fridge and we are going to add the sausage and cream cheese mixture to our scrambled eggs and freeze that in quart bags that we can pull out and use one or two days at a time. Um, to make breakfast burritos in the morning. It'll be nice and easy. They can just warm up a little bit of the filling at a time and put it in a tortilla for breakfast. Next, we made creamy coconut lentil curry. We start by using a mortar and pestle to grind up some fresh coriander and cumin seed. We heat some coconut oil over medium heat and add those fresh spices just until toasted. Give them a stir several times. You do not want them to burn and it is a short window. We add the garlic, give it a stir until it becomes fragrant and everything is well combined. Then we add the crushed tomatoes. All the spices in this dish are what give it so much flavor and make it so delicious. In addition to the coriander and cumin seeds, we're adding salt, curry powder, turmeric. Now it's time to add the lentils. This recipe just calls for brown lentils. Stir them well into the tomato sauce mixture, and then we're going to add the coconut milk and water. Now these are going to simmer for 45 minutes to an hour, and then I will let them cool before putting them in gallon bags. This baked oatmeal wasn't even in my plan today, but my friend Jennifer brought the recipe and I had everything I needed except for the flax meal and chia seeds, but she had plenty and she was willing to share. I have to confess, this is my first ever overnight oats or baked oatmeal of any kind and I'm pretty excited to try it. Now I filmed her making her recipe. I chose not to put raisins in mine. I ended up putting some sugar-free chocolate chips in ours only because some of my kids don't love raisins. I think if I make it again I will use the raisins and I will add some cinnamon and nutmeg because this recipe already calls for a can of pumpkin and it would just give it a nice fall flavor. I am so excited to try it. It was a wildly productive day and this was such a great reminder to me how easy it is to stick meals in the freezer even throughout the week when I realize I have all the components I need for certain dishes that I could throw in a bag and stick in the freezer for easy convenience at a later time. In all, I made 20 meals to go in the freezer today. Not all of them were pictured here because I had already put some in the fridge and freezer. And a few of the ones pictured here were not on my menu, but were some that Jennifer made, like oven fajitas. Thank you for joining me today. You can see here I got my kitchen back in order just in time for dinner. I hope this inspired you to get some meal prep and freezer cooking done for your family. Thanks for watching.